Welcome back. Christian Ziegler was recently elected the new chair of the Florida Republican Party. He is also a county commissioner in Sarasota County, and his wife, Bridget, is one of the founders of Moms for Liberty. I started our conversation by asking why he wanted to become the party chairman. Yeah, look, Jim, um, for me, the Republican Party is a passion of mine. Um, I have three girls, nine, seven, and four. Um, everything I do, and anyone that's been a parent knows when you have a child, you stop living for yourself and you start living for them uh, the moment you have a child. And it's the same thing with me. And I think this is a role, this is a very important role, a very critical role in the process. And it gives me the platform and the opportunity to help protect not just our country, not just our state, but our local communities and our families as well here in the state of Florida. So very excited to be chairman. Um, you know, I've been out there, I've worked on campaigns at various levels. Uh, but again, I always come back to the party that's a passion of mine. And um, I think we're going to do some great things with the Florida GOP going forward. Well, tell me, give me a sense of what some of your priorities are. Yeah. So look, we have had a lot of success in the state of Florida. Obviously, we, you know, everyone knows about Florida freedom. We've had so many people move here. And, the, and really the two key things that we've always focused on um, is voter registration. And we've seen in the state of Florida, since Governor DeSantis took over, we've had a million net new registered voters move to the state. Out of that, over 500,000 have registered as a Republican and only 17,000 have registered as Democrats. So we're crushing them when it comes to voter registration. Get out the vote. We saw last November, just a couple months ago, the governor didn't just win by one, you know, one percentage point or three or five, that would be a landslide. He won by 19.4%. A lot of that is his leadership, but it's also our ability to drive out, get out the vote. So we're going to continue to do voter registration, get out the vote. But here's what we're going to do differently going forward is we're going to go after the local races. We're going to go win school board seats, county commission, city commission seats. Those local races oftentimes go unnoticed. But what we saw during COVID is some of the big, biggest tyrants in the state are at those local levels where they tried to force curfews in counties or shut down schools or vaccine mandates on children, um, mask mandates. So we're not going to let those races go unnoticed anymore. We're going to dive into them. We're going to deliver victories for conservatives. Tell me why you call them tyrants. They overextend their, their, you know, the power that the people entrusted in them. I mean, I was a county commissioner during COVID for the last four years here in Sarasota County. We've got about, you know, 430, 440,000 citizens. It's a big county. It's a big jurisdiction. I had oversight during that. COVID was scary, but, you know, the, especially during the early stages. But the reality is, is our commission did it right. We showed up, we met. We didn't put undue burdens on citizens. We didn't shut down businesses. Um, and we were trying to get by with the bare minimum of govern, govern, government intrusion as possible. Whereas other counties, like one neighboring does just north of us in Manatee County, they imposed like curfew mandates. And, you know, you couldn't go outside after nine o'clock at night. I mean, this is America. That is not appropriate. Some people, when they get in power, they, they lose sight of the fact that they're representing the people doing the people's work, trying to do the best interest of the people. And instead, they get power hungry. We're going to go after those individuals that did that. We're going to make sure they're removed and defeated. Um, and we're going to replace them by people that first look out for freedom and look out for Floridians. I'm curious, when you talk about elected officials who you might target, uh, where does the mayor of Miami-Dade County rank on that list? Danielle Levine Cava. No, I mean, look, we're right now we're focused on school board level stuff. Um, we are focused on like in Sarasota, in my backyard, that's where I'm from. Um, you know, we have a school board member that said, I'm woke, I'm proud of it, and I'm operating in the most strategic place from the inside, inside the school district. And this individual is pushing a very radical agenda that is imposed on families and um, children. So that's what we're really going after, is we are looking at um, really Democrats and liberals that have overextended their hand and making sure we replace them from office. What is being woke? What is the definition of woke in your mind? Uh, insanity. So if you support insanity, you support wokeism. And what wokeism is, is really across the board, is they feel like all of society is against them, that people are insanely prejudiced and negative. Uh, but then they also, you know, their belief is that in equity and that everything should be equitable. And that word equitable, it, it sounds nice because it almost sounds like equality or it sounds like something fair, but what equitable is, is taking from other people and giving to other people that may not have worked or earned it, um, but to make sure everyone's equal. And that's just not how America works. What happens is you come in and you work hard, like my mom. I mean, I grew up in a single family household. 
Um, she worked uh, three jobs to get by. We were on government assistance um, when I was young, and she worked hard. She worked her tail off, and she ended up retiring and buying a place on Longboat Key. Well, so oh, imagine, let me just interrupt you there. So your mother raising you as a single mom on government assistance, what, what do you think, how do you think you would have reacted if you turned on the TV and heard someone say that, that um, you know, they were, you know, the people who get that government assistance is lazy, is someone who isn't interested in working, isn't trying to be, do the right thing. I mean, it, it, you know, there are circumstances where life is not fair to people, that is not equitable, and should government not try to be there to assist? Government's role isn't to play an equitable role. Um, there's a difference between assistance and equity. Well, what about what about creating a creating a level playing field so, so that, that people that? can compete? So how do you how, what do you do? How do you do that? You give me your you give me the solution. What what how do you create a level playing field? I mean, here's the level playing field. It's called the American dream and getting the government out of the way so people can achieve the American dream. Now, are there times where people deserve or not deserve, but can benefit from a little bit of assistance? Yes, but it should be a nudge. It shouldn't be a crutch and it shouldn't be something that you're lasted forever. And I saw that with my mom. She got a nudge when she needed it. She was young, single mom, uh, working three jobs, really putting in the work, putting in the effort. Um, but what happened is, is she was, frankly, she was embarrassed to get government assistance, wanted to get off it as quick as you can. So that's what you got to focus on are the people that genuinely need the assistance. I don't think there's not many people out there that are saying no assistance for anyone. But the issue becomes is when you have these laws, like I worked in D.C., and a lot of the way these laws were built and structured was look, we're going to give you assistance and we're going to incentivize you to have more children, to have more people that are dependent on you when you can't afford it. We're going to incentivize you to not work because if you get over a certain hours, we're going to remove those. So that's what happens in reality, the way these laws. So I think what people talk about, it's not fair to say that anyone's, everyone's against government assistance. What's fair is to say that, look, we need to have reforms in place that, okay, there's a nudge, there's a little bit of assistance, but then at that point, we're getting out of the way so they can succeed through hard work. And that's how America has been successful. We don't have to look too far. We can just, our country has only been around for a couple hundred years now. You can look back and say, how has America been successful? It's by allowing people to achieve the American dream. And the best way you can do that is by getting government out of the way. This isn't an anarchist play. I don't think anyone's arguing that we should have, you know, no government and no laws and no assistance. It's how do you structure it properly to encourage people to work rather than be dependent? Which phase of America are you referring to? Like, what what era are you talking about? Look, when I when I was born, I was born during the Reagan era. There was a, plenty of optimism, and there was plenty of success in America, right? And what I tell people all the time is, my job right now as a dad of three young girls is to ensure that they inherit a country that's better than the one I had. And uh, right now, that's at risk. I mean, you look at it right now, and I mean, there's some insane stuff going on in this country. My daughters swim at the same pool as Emma Wyatt. Let me tell you about Emma Wyatt. Silver medalist, gold medalist in swimming, one of the best in the entire world, not just the country. She goes to the NCAA championships, and then a, a boy is allowed to compete against her, a man that was frankly failing in the men's division and now is swimming against girls. That's, that's, a, that's a true war on women. I don't know where the press is, where the feminists are. They should be coming out screaming about this because here you have an Olympic silver medalist losing to someone that was like 200th in the men's division that decided to bounce over to the women's division and crush her and crush her dreams. She worked hard for this. Again, my kids, my daughters swim at the same pool, are coached by the same people she was coached by. No, no, and I hear you. And, and, and I, would, I would imagine that there are many people who would also agree that that's not fair, you know, but my question is, is that the role of government to intercede in a handful of cases involving transgender athletes? handful of cases. I mean, this is starting to spread everywhere, right? I mean, we're looking at the role. What do you mean by spread everywhere? I haven't really seen it spread everywhere. Yeah, so here in Sarasota County in 2018, before, while everyone was asleep at the wheel with parental rights and what's going on inside the schools, because that only became a hot topic, really. I hate to say it, but after COVID, when people saw what was really going on in the schools, we saw everything happen in Loudoun County and all of that. But I can tell you right here in Sarasota, we have 50,000 more Republicans and Democrats in our district or in our county. And yet here in Sarasota, they passed a policy in 2018 that was the child and the child alone will decide their gender. So that means that parents can't even be notified. So if you have a kindergartner, which I had actually in 2018, ironically, you have a kindergartner that decides to change their gender. The teacher can know, the school can know, but the parents can't be notified, right? 
That's an insane policy. Now, let me tell you about that. Not even a policy, because here's what they did, is they pushed them through as guidelines. Now, here's how guidelines work. They don't need to go for a vote. The public doesn't need to be notified. The superintendent just pushes it in as a guideline and forces it on families. What do you think of the idea of Governor DeSantis running for president? Are you supportive? Look, Governor has not made that decision yet. He'll make that decision when he's ready. Um, I've been very clear as my role, again, putting my party hat on. Uh, my job is to keep the organization neutral. And, uh, you know, I think we have President Trump, who's been one of, if not the greatest presidents of all time. And then we have a governor that's been one of, if not the greatest governor in Florida's history. So um, these individuals, they're going to, you know, they're obviously going at it right now. And that's the talk of the town. Uh, but I think the governor can make whatever decision he wants. Everyone has a right to run. You let them go forward. They're going to battle it out. And I'm a big believer, allow the grassroots to decide who our nominee is. Uh, but it's fair to say that you you came up as a big Trump supporter, correct? Yeah, look, I, I, well, this is what people don't understand as well. Because let me just let me just interject it this way so you can address it head on, because there there's a perception and, you know, I hate political rumor talk, but there's been a perception that that your rise to being the chair of the Florida Republican Party was in some way a pro Trump move as opposed to or an anti DeSantis move even. How would you know, you've heard that talk? I'm sure you have address it. Look, I've been very helpful to the president in the past. Um, I'm a party guy. What the, the, it's the easiest way to explain it is whoever our nominee is, whoever our candidate is, whoever our elected Republican is, I'm going to be their biggest cheerleader. That's my job. Now, as chairman of the Republican Party, that's my job. Now, as for the specifics, President Trump, it's hard to find anyone in the state of Florida. There's only a couple maybe that were bigger supporters of his. Um, going into 16's election, from 16 to 20, during 20's election. I was out there hustling because I think he did, he was a really a, a, a transformational candidate. Um, he made the Republican Party into a fighting party. Rather than a social club, we became a fight club, right? Governor DeSantis, if you look at him, I've been his biggest cheerleader as well. All you have to do is Google Christian Ziegler and Ron DeSantis, and you'll see no one has been in the press more than I have Um promoting the governor and what he's done, because I think he's done an outstanding job, especially on the cultural issues, which for me are a big passion of mine. You see, my wife is one of his top, he's out there saying she's the model school board candidate or a school board member. We need to have them in all of our counties. He just appointed her to the Disney board in Orlando. Um, she's obviously very close with the governor as well. And even me, I mean, during his campaign, I was asked to help kick off his rallies and get the crowd going before he spoke. So I have a good relationship with both men. I respect both men. I'm going to work hard for whoever our nominee ends up being. Uh, but my job with the party is to make sure that the grassroots are organized, mobilized, energized. We're out there executing on the ground for get out the boat for whoever our Republican nominee is. So I'm a big believer. Control what you can control. Everyone has their role in the process. My process now is I oversee the Republican Party grassroots in the state of Florida, and we're going to be the most organized, aggressive, and successful state party in the entire country. We'll be right back.